Sponsor today's video by sending us a whole plethora of water coolers. See, I can't even. So I've gotten a lot of complaints. Um, well, I get a lot of complaints all the time, but specifically people have complained that I don't do enough with air coolers. I'm known as the water cooling guru on YouTube, but that's not, I, mean, I don't want that to be the case. I want to educate people, and today we're gonna to talk about air coolers, specifically these coolers sent over by Be Quiet. They were kind enough to sponsor today's video by sending us this product. We're gonna talk about different types of air coolers, where you'd wanna use each different type of cooler, and things to think about when shopping for your air cooler. You know what, guys? I got new merch. It's available now, crowdme.com slash jc2cents. We got zip up hoodies, we got tri blend, we got a new logo. I digress since 2012. It's a digress logo. You guys have been asking for that. But anyway, we're going. We got all kinds of stuff zip up hoodies, beanies, polos. Don't take my word for it because obviously I can't do this ad. So just look in the description below and you guys will find the link. Thanks. <laughs> So not only am I gonna to talk today about the different types of coolers and the type of application you would use them, I'm also gonna show you some practical testing here with our 3900X, a CPU that is known to run fairly warm uh, compared to the stock Prisma or Wraith cooler or whatever this one's called that comes with it so that you can see what some of the benefits are to upgrading your cooler. Now when it comes to air coolers though, uh, there are some things that I guess a lot of people kind of get kind of confused about and that is how big of a cooler do I need? What's the TDP mean, the watts and all that sort of stuff? Well, Be Quiet makes it simple by just putting the size of the cooler, in this case in TDP or watts, uh, that it's able to cool. So in this case, we've got the Shadow Rock LP, which stands for low profile, and we'll take it out of the box in a second here, able to cool 130 watt TDP. But once you start overclocking, that particular power draw can definitely increase exponentially. So we've got the Shadow Rock TF2 here, which has got uh, a little bit more cooling capacity to it, more fins, which means that we can cool up to 160 watts. Now, if we go to our standard tower style coolers, that's where we get a lot of different variants here. They've got a TR4 edition and then a Dark Rock 4 Pro edition. So we're not using Threadripper today. We're going to go ahead and set that one aside. But when it comes to cooling properties, it's essentially the same as the Dark Rock Pro. But we've got the Pure Rock Slim and the Dark Rock Slim. If you guys remember from CES this year, I said that the Dark Rock Slim was kind of my favorite cooler that was on the table. And the reason for that is it's all blacked out. It's got a black coating on the pipes and the fins that they've done a lot of in-house testing to make sure that that coating isn't insulating any of the heat. It's still getting a great transfer. I believe it was actually a Teflon layer that's giving you great temperature transfer to the outside of the cooler, whereas paint and, anod not anodizing, but paint and powder coating and all that sort of stuff can actually insulate the heat, giving you a poor uh, temperature transfer. But the Pure Rock and the Dark Rock Slim I like these because they're guaranteed to fit in many more chassis, not just the neighboring components, and we'll show you what I mean by that in a sec, but also the height. So you can get 120 uh, watts dissipated on the, the Rock Slim, or the Pure Rock Slim, which is gonna be great for non-overclocked you know, i7s, even i9s, or even r9s on, on the Ryzen. But you get up to 180 watt TDP on the Dark Rock Slim, which is the blacked out version. Now let's go ahead and talk about things you need to think about though when it comes to which cooler is right for you. What you have to be mindful of is Depending on the motherboard you're using, we obviously have memory that sticks up. Memory is getting faster, and as it gets faster, it gets hotter. Because of that, you're seeing bigger heat sinks, which is making the memory taller. But you can see I'm using uh, the two outer with one in between. The, technically, that's channel one when it comes to memory, one and two, slot one for each channel. If I was running four sticks of RAM in here, I would have this slot right here occupied, which puts it pretty close to the cooler. So if your cooler sat really low, it could interfere with the memory because we could potentially impact on this RAM. So as you can see right here, where it goes down to where the CPU is, it's probably barely gonna clear this RAM, but that's something you need to think about because there are RAM uh, modules on the market that sit taller than this G-Skill. And if that's the case, it could impact on the bottom of the cooler. And then there's this guy. The Dark Rock Pro 4. This is the type of cooler that rivals water cooling and AIOs. This is probably one of the sexiest air coolers you could possibly buy today. And that's because of its crazy, all blacked out, dual fan, amazing goodness that it is. So there's a fan that actually goes right here in the middle, but the reason why that fan's not in there, and we'll show you this during the install, is because Dark Rock has thought of everything when it comes to the actual install. So these are actually caps that come off right here. And one of the complaints about the old Be Quiet coolers was the fact that it had a mounting bracket, like a, like a star bracket that you'd find for Intel and stuff, that you had to try and screw around the sides. But it was impossible to get to it 
With a motherboard like this, because of the giant IO shield and then the big heat sinks and stuff, you couldn't actually get to it to tighten it down. So now you have these screws that unscrew right here. You use the long screwdriver, which is included in here to actually be able to tighten it down. And then you put the fan in afterward. It's got these rubber vibrating pads on here for the fan mount so that any of the fan vibration doesn't translate to your motherboard, which is gonna translate to your case and then to your desk and then to your annoyance. So you don't want that, right? You don't want things transferring to your annoyance, that's bad. But the fin density, again, again with that black coating on here, just makes this probably the sexiest air cooler in my opinion. And because you've got two cooling towers plus seven heat pipes, means that this, this is definitely gonna keep things cool. But the orientation of this cooler would kind of go obviously with being able to read the name, air travels from right to left. So you've got, this is a pusher fan, that is a push-pull fan blowing air out because the fan's in the middle. So this is the way it would go oriented on your motherboard. In your case, it's upside down because you're on the wrong side of it. But what you need to be mindful of when it comes to the amount of, um, or the amount of room you have around here is not just the heat sinks and the memory and the IO, but also your graphics card. This graphics card, fortunately on this motherboard, has a little bit of spacing to the first 16X slot where it pushes it down away from the cooler a little bit. Some motherboards do not have that spacing where this first 16X slot is butted right up against the IO shield, which means that there could potentially be conflict with the size of your graphics card you're using, how thick the back plate is. But uh, fortunately, Be Quiet has kept this as narrow as possible in this configuration, technically it's a square, while getting you as much airflow this way and as much volume as possible. So this guy would still fit in here, obviously, with plenty of room. But again, just something you need to think about when you're trying to find the right air cooler for your build. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and set up our um, monitor. We're gonna run like the BMW blender test to see what our max temperatures are at stock speeds. We're not overclocking this, and then we'll compare those temperatures. So we're not controlling anything out of the box, but because of the power and temperature overhead that we're gonna be getting with the lower temperatures, we should, we might even see a little bit higher of an overclock, but that's what the point of this video is. Look at that. I wanna build like a whole system just around this aesthetic and then we'll call it like dark night. All right, so we're sitting here idle with the stock cooler. Um, we're bouncing right around four gigahertz. This is normal. It's gonna, it's gonna fluctuate like this all the time. Here's Ryzen Master sitting 42, 40, 39, 38, 37. Wow going up oh, there it is back up to 45 so as things are doing its stuff that's our temperatures right there so we're looking at well that was 47 for a second so here's what we're gonna do we're just gonna go ahead and run the blender um, benchmark for our CPU we're gonna let it run both tests because we want to get it nice and hot although air coolers unlike water coolers don't take that long to reach equilibrium and they also cool off extremely fast once they're off load Water coolers, it takes time for that water to absorb all that energy and turn into its max temperature. And then same thing, once you're done with the test, it takes time for the heat exchanger to expel all of that temperature. So it's much slower with water cooling testing. So we don't have to run a 30 minute test here to find equilibrium. Air coolers do it extremely quickly, especially a small cooler like this. All right, there we go. So our frequency, 414422. So that's just like a momentary spike. It looks like 402. So yeah, we'll just let this go and we'll find what the max temperatures were when we're done. So this has been going for probably more than 10 minutes now at this point. So we're sitting around 88 or 89 degrees bouncing around. We even saw 90 for a second running the second part of the blender test. Um, you can see right here, our, our frequency is locked right around 3.975, four gigs right around there using 76% of our available TDP. This tells us we've got plenty of power draw headroom but our frequency coming down from like the 4.2-ish where it kind of wanted to go at, at the start, that's because we are way too close to our 95C uh, limit. So because we have pl plenty of headroom, now what we need to do is get that temperature down. And we're gonna do that by installing our Dark Rock Pro 4. So the new install technique on the uh, Dark Rock Pro is absolutely amazing. We, we, talk, we covered this at CES, how that was the most exciting thing for me was just adding a couple of holes to go straight down with 
This really overkill screwdriver, and you know, this is probably the cheapskate in me. This is my favorite part of the kit. This is a screwdriver with a magnetic tip that's worth keeping. It's not just a piece of metal with a Phillips head on the end like you get in some kits. So this, it, and it even says be quiet on there. So I don't know why, but this is my favorite part. But that coupled with the uh, Silent Wings fans on here and the very, um, well, silent curve that they have to, well, the design of the blade and then the fan curve with AMD, this is extremely silent, which you would expect with a company called Be Quiet, with fans called Silent Wings. Oh, and also too, we did have to adjust the height of one of the fans here, right above the RAM, because just like I said, RAM being taller, there's an opportunity for an impact or any sort of a um, incursion. It, it could touch, it could touch the RAM. And so what I did was I slid the fan up just slightly and we were able to clear that with no problems whatsoever. So we've got our middle fan installed, so we have a push-pull uh, configuration going on here. They even give you extra clips if you want to install a third fan on this. So you could have a push, push, pull, pull if you wanted. All right, so you know what we gotta do now? We gotta go ahead and do the same exact test, the same exact settings. Um, you can see now we're idling at like the 33 area right there. And our peak speed is jumping all around as always. But let's go ahead and start our quick benchmark. And let's see what the temperature immediately goes up to. So I mean, that's already promising considering at this point in the test, the stock cooler was already in the 80s. So the test is still running 71, well 70 degrees now, 69. This is the test where we hit 90. So you can see we are definitely getting some good headroom. But this is what I'm talking about in terms of the silence of this. Check this out. Here's my mic. It is so freaking quiet. So if you recall in the stock cooler, we were at 88 to 90 degrees in this same part of the test and we are not surpassing 77. 12 to 13 degrees cooler with it basically sitting at like idle fan speed. So what we have to do now is we're gonna go ahead and stop the test. There's no point in letting it continue on because it's equalized. It's not getting any hotter and the test isn't getting any hot, any harder. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the BIOS and I'm just curious if I go in there and just ramp up that curve a little more aggressive to where we can kind of hear the cooler. Cause remember you put it in a case that's gonna kill some of the sound as well. I wanna see what the temps look like then. But I think it's pretty obvious already that air coolers have definitely come up. So we just decided to do 100% on the fans because the silent wing fans are so quiet. Our AC turning on is louder than my mic sitting here in front of the cooler. All right, so we're about 75C right now. You can see our, our core speed is staying above four gigahertz this time where we had dropped down to like 3.9 before. It's also important to point out it's doing it with a lot of voltage too. Our motherboard seems to be ignoring our voltage settings and is still going up to like 135, 138, which is very warm for the 3900X and it's still able to keep that voltage cool. That's an overclocking voltage and it's keeping it cool. So as you can see, it's definitely doing its job and it's doing it extremely quiet. So there you go. If you guys are looking for a way to keep your uh, high core count CPUs or any CPU for that matter, nice and cool and give you some overclocking headroom and some longevity, then you definitely want to check out what Be Quiet has to offer. I'll put a link down in the description below to go to their website. You can check out all the different options. They pretty much got every CPU socket covered. Oh, no pun intended. Covered when it comes to your cooling. Uh, that way you can keep all of your computers running as fast as possible. Again, a huge thanks to Be Quiet for sending over these coolers for today's video. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm serious when I say I'm gonna do an all matte black build now. Marquez would be proud. Now the nice thing about B-Rock boxes, B-Rock, B-Rock boxes. <laughs> Jay's beat of the day. <laughs> Jay, you don't do enough with, uh, to 180 watts on the watt, watts, watt, or a single, but because anything with low profile memory, and I just touched the thermal paste. We've got Ryzen Master Open, uh, Oprah, blah.